Just a warning, if you were in my presence and you decide to refer to anyone as a faggot, batiman, bulaman, or any other derogatory term for a homosexual, run. obscene language as I feel like I'm a woman educated enough to not have to resort to obscene language however it may happen so darlings this week I am in the hair salon getting my hair done the hair salon is on a main street in Port of Spain all of a sudden a figure walks by and I say figure because this figure has long blonde straight and hair so with the tightest jeans that one could find, jeans that I can't even fit into, and I'm a hot 12 on a good day. Hello. A tank top. I say tank top because it's not quite a wife beater. It's not quite a vest. For all intents and purposes, this is a tank top. And a white, and a pink, sorry, a pink knapsack. Now everybody's engaged in conversation, so nobody's really observing what is happening. There's a car that is passing on the opposite side of the street, this car decides it is going to stop in the middle of traffic. Now this car has four young men in it. Their race is unimportant, irrelevant to the story that I'm sharing with you today. One of the young men gets out of the car, crosses the street, and decides that he is going to approach this, we figured out it was a young man. He is calling the young man all sorts of names. Now, our store has a glass window so we can see everything that is happening outside of the salon. He is taunting this young man and the young man decides he is going to defend himself. He is not just going to stand there and take this folly. All of a sudden, another one of the gentlemen comes out of the car and decides he is going to rough up the young man. Well, I don't want to tell you the rage that came up inside of me. Listen! I take the hot comb that she was working on with my hair, man. I run outside and I put one hot comb in his neck. And I say, you need somebody to treat you and deal with you the same way that you are dealing with this young man. As I burn him on the neck with the hot comb, he and he next jackass partner run back in the car and they sped off in traffic. And so when I went back into the hair salon, everybody's in a shock and after a moment of silence, the conversation begins. And the conversation brought up exactly what I call the three lay perspectives. Darling, if you don't know what lay means, Google is your best friend. One of the ladies gives her perspective and she says, you know, I just, I feel sorry for the young man, eh? but I just feel like it's against God. Darling, since I've been in the salon for the last four hours, you've managed to consume two boxes of KFC and two sodas. The last I checked, gluttony is against God too. So maybe I should beat you up while calling you glutton. We live in a multi-denominational country. Everybody is free to exercise whatever religion they believe in. Whether it is religion, belief, whatever. We are free to believe whatever we want to believe and live that way. Great, hold on to your perspective and I'm not against you for believing anything. But, that is no reason to justify treating someone else different. Another woman say, well, I don't mind him being that way, but he don't have to show it. Like, he don't have to carry around himself like that. He don't have to wear those clothes. I said, darling, where do you shop? In Miami. Visually brand name clothing. I don't mind you being rich, but why buy expensive clothes? Because you so choose. 
Because this is how you express your individuality. You have no problem letting people know, I can afford Louis Vuitton. And so you have a 4,000 US dollar Louis Vuitton purse. I don't take your purse and say you shouldn't be showing everybody that you're rich. No, darling. It is the same thing. If a member of our society chooses to express their individuality in whatever way, shape or form, they're free to do so. Another lay perspective says, you know, I don't mind you being that way, eh? but still be a man, you know, still act like a man. Darling, I'm sorry to inform you that your definition and your perception of manhood, while it is yours, and I'm not here to approach on whatever you believe and whatever you perceive, but in defining manhood, your definition and perception, lady, is wrong. Manhood is not asserting yourself with a certain aggression and vigor in our society. Manhood is not walking in a certain way as though the size of your apparatus should determine how you assert yourself on the streets. Among a few other faulty perceptions of manhood that we have as a society. Darling, manhood is being honest in your dealings with people, having integrity in your business, taking it upon yourself to provide for your family, whatever your family may look like. Being a good son, being a good father, being a good grandson, being a good cousin. All of these things are just some of the perspectives of manhood that we need to begin to adopt. And not think of men as a low voice and tall brawny shoulders that will beat up anything that disagrees with it. No. And so that's my thoughts for today. Um, it's a very serious topic and I understand the fact that a society needs time to change. But if we all continue to say we're not ready for that yet, darling, we will never change. If people don't take a stand and say no, I don't agree with this person's lifestyle, but I treat them and respect them as an equal human being with everybody else. I'm not here to bash them. Leave them to live their life the way that they should. If we shared a moral code as a society that saw one person being harassed, and we as a society decided for ourselves, this has to stop. People have to stop living in fear of expressing themselves as an individual, whatever aspect of themselves that may be. Whether it be tattoos, if you want to tattoo your entire body, darling, go ahead, it is your body, and you should do so as you please. I don't have to like it. I can look at you and look at your tattoos and say, ooh, that ugly. But if I choose to hit you, because I want to beat the tattoo off of your skin, there's something wrong there. And we need to decide for ourselves that we are no longer going to continue living in the society that allows these things to happen. We are going to elevate our moral code as a people. We are going to come together and say no. My child, my children, my grandchildren are going to be able to live in whatever kind of freedom that they choose to. They're going to be able to express themselves in whatever way they want to and they will live in a Trinidad and Tobago that they are proud of and comfortable to live in. If you or someone you know is having a hard time dealing with issues of identity or sexuality, please take time to listen. Should you need the assistance of a trained professional, try any one of the contacts listed here. There is help out there. This is Miss Janae coming to you saying, keep it real.